Um, I, I've already made a video regarding uh, Richard Spencer, th that uh, son of a bitch uh, white supremacist who doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground. But I I'm doing this particular segment on the Andrea Mitchell uh, program because uh, she made mention of something that I believe is of uh, major importance, uh, not uh, just to the uh, general uh, population, but uh, specifically to uh, African American people all throughout this country, and the effect that it's having uh, on our kids just listening to all of the stuff that's going on. So, uh, if you've seen uh, this next segment before, just bear with me. Um, it's her comments after this particular section uh, and her conversation with the head of the uh, Anti-Defamation League that uh, to me is of uh, premier importance. Supporters of Donald Trump's election and the alt-right movement gathered in Washington this weekend at the Reagan building, a government facility. To okay, now, I hate to jump in here. How the hell do a bunch of white supremacists get uh, access to a government building to hold a white supremacist meeting? Can anybody answer me that question? You know, I could understand that they rented out a hall or whatever to have their meeting, but they're in a government facility. So in my mind, that just tells me that somebody in the government is giving these guys license. That's just my opinion because I don't know how obtaining uh, usage of a, a federal government building is obtained, but I gotta think that uh, it's not in the norm for uh, a white supremacist group or any other uh, group with uh, an anti-social uh, uh, agenda should be able to uh, get into. But I digress. Let's keep going. Celebrate with a white supremacist speech and echoes of signature language from Nazi Germany. As Europeans, we are uniquely at the center of history. We are, as Hegel recognized, the embodiment of world history itself. No one will honor us for losing gracefully. We are not meant to live in shame and weakness and disgrace. We were not meant to beg for moral validation from some of the most despicable creatures to ever populate the planet. Now, who the hell is he talking about when he says some of the most despicable creatures to populate the planet? Because for us, as Europeans, it is only normal again when we are great again. Hail Trump! Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! Now, just so that you know, okay, um, this guy, throughout this speech, and, and I didn't make all the clips, but this guy was using a lot of words in uh, German, okay? Um, he used a German word for uh, the dishonest press. Uh, obviously, um, he's referring to uh, German authors and philosophers um, that were uh, pro-Nazi uh, movement. So for this guy to later on turn around and say that uh, he didn't say uh, Heil uh, Trump, yeah, he might not have said Heil Trump, but uh, if you are in any way familiar uh, with the uh, signature Hail Hitler or Heil Hitler uh, slogan, he was basically sowing uh, the seeds for uh, everyone at the end of his speech to really say uh, Heil Hitler. Hail victory! As uncovered by the Atlantic magazine, some members of the audience then jumped to their feet. You can see this with arms extended. And an Atlantic reporter at present says he heard some shouting Heil in German, not Hail, the translation in English. NBC News was not present to independently confirm what happened. But to comment, uh, when pressed to comment, 
A spokesman for Donald Trump's transition said, President-elect Trump has continued to denounce racism of any kind and was elected because he will be a leader for every American. To think otherwise is a complete misrepresentation of the movement that united Americans from all backgrounds. Joining me now is Jonathan Greenblatt, CEO and National Director of the Anti-Defamation League. Jonathan, uh, we've never seen anything like this in an election cycle. There has been plenty of white supremacist stuff sure. out there. You track it all the time. Yeah. But this is pretty noteworthy. It's not part of Donald Trump's transition or administration and, and creation. It's yeah. an ind independent support group. But let's just translate for people. When he says, as Europeans, when he talks about yep. my struggle, yep. that's Mein Kampf. Absolutely right. Look, you know, 50 years ago, the KKK hid behind white hoods. Today, they might hide behind their business suits and their smartphones, but it's the same racist, anti-Semitic, violent ideology, which has characterized extremists for generations. The ADL has been around for over 100 years, monitoring and tracking extremism and fighting hate. We've never seen anything like this, literally just a few feet away from the White House. And in fact, inside the White House, you have Stephen Bannon, and who has not been open to uh, mainstream press for interviews, but he has been criticized as anti-Semitic. What is your take on Stephen Bannon? Look, I don't know what his intent is. All I know is the outcome. And under his leadership, Breitbart emerged, in his words, as a the platform for the alt-right, the term that these guys like to use to describe their movement, which in a way kind of couches it or clothes it in modern language. Again, it's white supremacy. It's rampant hate. And Richard Spencer, the speaker there, yeah. uh, talked to Hallie Jackson and said that uh, this was meant to be cheeky, exuberant, ironic. Uh, this, yeah, I mean, your take look, on that? There's nothing cheeky about hate, and we can't take our eye off the ball on bigotry. It's, it's important what you said before. This wasn't the Trump rally. These were independent people, but we think it's critical for the president-elect and all elected officials to speak out quickly and consistently in the face of hate like this. And there was also a pre-rally or pre-meeting yep. dinner at a local restaurant that you and I both know yep. from our neighborhoods. You used to be in Washington. Yep. And uh, this is an Italian restaurant. They thought that they were booking a group. I've been to bar mitzvah celebrations there, as a matter of fact. Right. And then when we, they saw what had happened, there were protesters against the group there. And I think we have a picture uh, that was put up of some of the people who were there that night with their arms outstretched in the, in the Nazi. This was the bar mitzvah uh, party. Right. So this was what it looks like. These are neo-Nazis or Nazi sympathizers raising their arms in a salute, which just reminds us, even though we live with such privilege here in the United States, you can't take your eye off the ball when it comes to bigotry. I've spoken to friends and associates, mm -hmm. and only yesterday speaking to um, a, a family grandparents mm -hmm. of African-American children, mm -hmm. four years old and six years old. Mm -hmm. They live in Harlem. Their uh, parents are academics, mm -hmm. uh, prestigious you know, universities. And so they're totally secure mm -hmm. economically. And the little girl said uh, she wants to be white. Oh. This little African-American child, right. four years old. And why? Because she said, I feel that black people are going to be shot under she said under Trump. Now, obviously, this is this is. See, now that that's the piece that uh, I wanted to uh, play. When this shit starts getting this serious, where our children are in fear for their lives to the point that they want to be white because they think if they're, you know, if they're black that they're going to be killed. No, we we got to step up to the plate on this one. We got to start doing something about these assholes because if we don't and we let this shit continue the way that it is without trying to do something about it uh we're going to be in for a hell of a next four years if not longer and i got news i got people up in new york too and if there are any issues with any of my people up there i got enough military in my family that we should be able to handle whatever the situation is. Now, obviously, I am a peace-loving person, but if they start fucking with mine, I'm damn sure going to fuck with theirs. Obviously, this is 
this is the way a child is interpreting right. it, but there is a, there's an effect on children all over America in minority, in, in, in communities of color. We have seen this. So we have 26 offices across the country, and since the election, we have seen a surge in bias incidents and hate crimes, acts of vandalism, cyber verbal bullying. harassment, cyberbullying, as we've talked about, even physical assault, and it directed against Jews, African Americans, Mexicans, Muslims, the LGBT community. This just shows us that we're seeing a normalizing of hate and anti-Semitism that is really unacceptable. That's why I think all good people need to step up and speak out. The, the only thing I would say here, the silver lining, is at the same time we've seen the surge of hate crimes, Andrea, we've seen a surge of hope. Donations are up 50 times at our website, ADL.org. We've been inundated with calls from people who want to volunteer. So I feel heartened by the fact that good people of good conscience are stepping forward, and I hope that others will do the same. Thank you very much. Thank I hope so too, but that's one thing about the Jews in this country anyway, they don't fuck around. When stuff like this starts going down uh, and somebody sounds the alarm, the, the Jewish people come running and uh, they are not going to take a step back on this. So this shit is going to hit the fan one way or the other. I'm just hoping, to be honest with you, that uh, the ADL and organizations uh, like them uh, get into the fray and do something about these guys because if we jump in there they're going to call it a race war if the jews jump in there uh it's just going to be uh something that's a bit out of the ordinary as far as mainstream media is concerned